everyone, this is Brain's Journey, and welcome back to another information element video. Today we're going to talk about SI, or introverted sensing. Um, I figured I'd follow up with this function, the next sensing function, after SE. If you'll recall the video on SE, if you haven't, then I advise going and watching it. Um, but I thought I'd make this one to compare and contrast them so that you both can, uh, so that you all can identify them better. Um, so yeah, let's get into some alternative names and then we'll move on from there. So, things that you may see SI called that are not necessarily, quote, orthodox or um, related to the MBTI description, whatever. You might see this white circle and uh, correspondingly a uh, white sensing. You remember in the last one we had the black circle, black sensing. Well, this is different. Um, we have this one as experiential sensing in contrast to SE, which was volitional sensing. And then the Latin word census, which you will see abbreviated to S. Um, so the definition, the logical definition, just to kick this video off, what is SI directly? So as we can see from the board, SI perceives information about how external sensory processes are reflected by one's internal state. So this ties back to the experiential part. You know, unlike SE, which is more action-based, more force-based, this one is more about one's subjective experience, how one is subjectively experiencing senses and uh, external processes in the environment. So to illustrate this in detail, we have some concepts here that I've listed out um, that I'm going to go over briefly, and then we'll move to behavioral stuff. So the first thing that we want to look at with SI is immediate needs. What does that mean? Well, let's say survival needs, maybe food, water, thirst, shelter, you know, all these things that are required to craft a beneficial experience for somebody. Um, if, you know, immediate survival things, things that somebody needs to function, um, you know, things like that. Then we move to immediate experience. This is kind of related. Is somebody's, uh, somebody's senses, somebody's um, sense-related experiences, maybe taste, um, maybe touch, maybe sight. People are um, concentrated on how they're experiencing things in the moment. Um, that's in contrast to the MBTI definition. If you'll remember, these are socionics definitions. We're learning socionics here. Um, but a lot of people in the MBTI community um, it define SE as being related to the present moment. But in this theory, SI is more related to the present moment because it's tied to one's subjective experience, not anything uh, action related. So we have that. We also have health and hygiene. Now, SI is very much related to one's internal state, and uh, health and hygiene is related to the upkeep of one's internal state. You want to keep somebody's uh, internal state flowing well? Well, maybe you have to practice health. Maybe you go to the gym, eat beneficial foods. Um, maybe you'll clean yourself up, you know, hygiene, clothing, things like that, brushing your teeth. Those are all things related to SI, taking care of the body's internal state as it functions in daily life. Um, another thing is naturalism. They like nature. SI is related to nature, what seems natural, what seems unnatural. Again, it's all tied back to this internal state. Um, aesthetics are a big part of that. You'll see in a lot of naturalist paintings this reflection of SI on the environment, seeing the environment for what it is, one's immediate experience. They enjoy this kind of naturalism. Another thing that we kind of went over, but I thought I'd include it anyway as a separate category, is nourishment. So while that's not necessarily related to immediate needs, nourishment is also about um, taking care of the body, although it may not necessarily be for a survival purpose, perhaps. People who are on the negative side of things, people who are gluttonous, who just eat to eat, um, perhaps are SI users, if it's for the experience. Um, that's just an example, by the way. Um, and also, you know, overindulgence of sensory pleasures could also be tied to nourishment, all these things that are related to SI. Um, so yeah, while nourishment is related to sensory satisfaction, it is not necessarily related to immediate needs, although they both fall under the same main information element. Um, another thing we want to look at is comfort. Comfort is a big thing for SI users, or, or just uh, SI valuing types, I should say, that we're going to get into that a lot later. Um, but comfort, whether something is, is comfortable or not comfortable, there's this distinction that's made, um, an effort to maintain a comfortable environment, um, leisure activities, you know, things that are enjoyable for the mind and the body, 
um, things that can bring comfort, things that can bring uh, satisfaction, pleasure. That's a big thing for SI, um, is, is the comfort in one's environment. Um, another thing is convenience, whether something is convenient or not. Laziness is one thing. If something's inconvenient, SI is, is, not, is, is not conducive to that. Um, it, it prizes things that are easy to achieve, they're easy going. Um, a lot of things that maybe um, are not, they don't push themselves too much to achieve goals. If they'd be inconvenient for the personal experience, um, it's a lot of things that are related to just straight convenience. Um, another thing that I talked about kind of through the whole list is one's environment, but yes, that's a separate category, something that we need to focus on, is one's immediate environment, what one is paying attention to, um, the home that one lives in, maybe the, the community that one lives in, maybe the nature, all the, all the trees and things related to one in, in one city. If you live in a city and, and perhaps an SI valuing type wouldn't like the fact that they live in an urban environment, just as an example. Um, it, it is a subjective measure of how somebody values their environment and all the things that are going on around them as times change and their um, physical conditions, um, you know, waver over time. Another thing that's kind of related to all these things that was sort of implied, but I thought I'd include it, is balance and harmony. SI users like to achieve balance. They like to achieve homeostasis in their natural environment. That's why we have the health and hygiene. They're keeping up their personal state. You know, you have the nourishment and the immediate needs, solving all those survival problems. They want this harmony and this balance that comes with maintaining somebody's own internal state and all the things that are required to keep one's experience um, focused and relaxed. And then the last thing that I wanted to focus on is simplicity, is, is they don't like to, um, SI is not over complex. It's, um, you know, sort of simple. It likes to keep things to a down low in its environment. Um, SI is related to the simplest possible, you know, method of achieving things. Maybe with all these things, these concepts that we've covered, SI would seek the most um, efficient simplicity in all of these things. So now we've gone over some concepts. We've gone over some concepts, immediate needs, immediate experience, health and hygiene, naturalism, nourishment, comfort, convenience, one's environment, balance and harmony, and simplicity. And now we want to look at how all of that is manifested in somebody's behavior. How it does SI look like when it is expressed through one's behavior? Well, we'll talk about it. So, what does it look like behaviorally? Well. A lot of SI valuing types spend time doing enjoyable activities. They'll, uh, because of this immediate needs and these, this health and hygiene, comfort, all this stuff kind of lines up, um, they, they tend not to spend too much time um, overachieving, working, doing things that are required to strenuous physical effort because that's more correlated with SE. No, they'll spend more time doing things that are enjoyable for themselves, things that they want to pursue. You know, a hobby maybe. Hobbies are related to SI. Um, something that takes up your time. Things like that. Another thing is, they don't force others around. They're, you know, they're not focused on volition as an SE type would. Um, or, or as SE expressed would, volitionally. They don't want to force others around. They don't want to make things um, strained. They don't want to um, control. They don't want to force relationships. They want to let things be. They want to um, let things flow the way that they were flowing and um, let everybody do their own thing and, uh, you know, without exerting any physical effort. Um, you know, along with those two things seems implied that these, uh, that SI would look easygoing and pleasant um, because they're, you know, they're enjoyable activities. They don't force others around. They're generally pretty calm, collected people um, or not people. You see, I'm mixing up my terms here, but you know what I mean. Um, although there are certain situations where if well-being is at stake, um, SI um, ceases to function, then perhaps um, a type may switch to using SE to achieve that kind of goal. Because um, if the environment is not going well, somebody's disrupting the environment, something is disrupting the environment, they may lose this kind of easygoing and pleasant um, behavioral trait in order to focus on um, coming back to that balance and harmony, sometimes by force. 
Another thing that we want to look at is that they believe that goals should suit people's intrinsic needs. There's not a purpose. Or, or perhaps, um, for example, at maybe an SE user would have a, a very top-tier goal. Maybe they want to reach something. Maybe they want to strive for something. Maybe they want to influence something. The SI valuer would say, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe the SI, maybe goals should suit people's intrinsic needs, what people want. Um, how, how people want to achieve the balance and harmony in their environment instead of aspiring for this, you know, top tier goal that they may not even achieve. And so they believe that goals perhaps should not be static, but suit people's um, intrinsic needs as an individual. And then the last thing is that they don't strain themselves to achieve goals. Kind of went over that, but another thing that I want to reiterate is that um, they're more focused on spending time doing things that are enjoyable for themselves than kind of achieving lofty personal goals. So we, we do see that uh, SI behaviorally is, is associated with a um, kind of a, an easygoing, pleasant vibe that doesn't strain to achieve goals. So what have we gone over in this lecture? In conclusion, we went over some alternative names as we will be and, and always have done. Um, we went over the logical definition, but obviously that wasn't enough. We went over some concepts that are tied to SI to bolster the definition, and then to, to add on to everything that we talked about, we went over some behavioral annotations so that you can begin to identify SI in your environment. Um, so yeah, that's the lecture. Hope you enjoyed. Hope this was comprehensive enough. Next lecture, we'll be getting into NE, extroverted intuition, so stay tuned for that. And I uh, hope you all have a good one, and I'll see you in the next lecture.